Hey everybody, Trace again for D News. Did you see this craziness? About 9 a.m. local time, 950 miles or about 1,500 kilometers south of Moscow, a meteor streaked through the skies. That is a sonic boom from this meteor, and it was so loud that it shattered glass. It's so bright that it cast shadows. As you can see, this meteor split into multiple pieces while burning up in our atmosphere, not unusual. The Russian Academy of Sciences said it weighed about 11 tons and that it probably crashed somewhere near a lake south of Moscow. A crater has been found and some debris has been seen around the area, but we don't know that much about it. Anthony is following this story really closely, so in our second video of the day later this afternoon, we will have even more information for you. So make sure you check back. Stuff is falling from the sky. 2012 DA-14 is going to fly right by us, the closest ever. The scary thing is we did not see this one coming because we we're all busy looking at 2012 DA-14 that's going to pass us this afternoon. They are unrelated. It was a cosmic coincidence. But first, let me explain something. An asteroid is a chunk of rock or something else floating around outside in space. Once it hits our atmosphere, then it starts streaking through and burning up, then it's a meteor. And if it manages to not burn up completely and it hits the ground, the pieces that are left behind are called meteorites. It's kind of like a stalactite stalagmite thing. We just have different names for different pieces. Science likes naming things. Deal with it. A number of companies have been planning to launch small spacecraft aimed at exploring near-Earth asteroids like 2012 DA-14 for possible mining and even colonization. So when stuff like this happens, it can provide a fantastic opportunity to learn what these asteroids are made of because we're not actually that certain. Assuming meteorites from this event survive, we could learn a lot. See, these flying rocks aren't all the same. They're not just rocks. Some of them are are filled with precious metals that are extremely rare here on Earth. That's a big business for any company that can manage to get to one and then mine it for resources. It could also be the first stepping stone in sending humans into deep space. The aptly named Deep Space Industries plans to send a 55-pound spacecraft into orbit. That's 25 kilo for you metric users out there. And they're going to launch in the next two years. The company also plans to use these small spacecraft to find spots for potential colonies that could in turn make resources that could launch humans even farther into deep space. Hopefully they'll also use these resources to construct asteroid warning systems and maybe even strategies to stop these things from hitting the planet. So why didn't NASA pull their crap together and get a rocket ready to launch up to 2012 DA-14 that's supposed to pass us today? Wouldn't this relatively small, extremely close flying asteroid been a perfect target to shoot for? In a short answer, yeah. It would have. Luckily, I asked Dr. Ian O'Neill that exact question yesterday, and here is his answer. Yeah, I mean, this is NASA's long-term plan, and um, President Obama set NASA on this path, I think, back in two, 2009, because A, we need to know more about these, uh, these asteroids, and B, we can actually build the technology to get astronauts beyond low Earth orbit. But it has a very practical purpose if we send uh, people to these asteroids to understand them more close and perhaps strap engines to it in the future, who knows, um, it, the more the better. But we don't have the capabilities right now. We can't get astronauts into space, well certainly NASA can't. So this is why private enterprise are kind of getting excited about sending humans into space because NASA can contract them. But the long-term plans for NASA is to get um, a deep space spaceship to an asteroid, rendezvous with the asteroid, do a little mission and actually understand what, what it takes to get humans there. And ultimately, if humans could be part of this mitigation strategy, because ultimately we will get hit by an asteroid in the future, whether it's gonna be in the next 10 years or in the next 100 to 1,000 years, we don't know. But there will be humans on this planet when we get hit next by a sizable asteroid. And as I say, this asteroid that's flying by is fairly big. It's about the size of the one that caused the Tunguska explosion back in, in 1908. Um, and also the meteor crater in Arizona. It's about that size, so they can take out a city. People often have passionate arguments about whether or not we should mine our environment here on Earth. But the question I pose is, is the argument different when it comes to an asteroid in space? Do we have a responsibility to protect the environment of an asteroid? Think about it and share your conclusions in our comments area. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Keep your eye on the skies.